As the cases of COVID-19 continues to rise, President Mohamed Buhari addresses the nation again tonight. Will he extend the lockdown? This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. Welcome back. Globally, the cases of coronavirus have surpassed 1 million, and out of this number, Nigeria currently accounts for 323. In view of this, the president of the nation, Mohamed Bari, is addressing the nation tonight, and on Plus Politics, we will be looking up live to watch this. Joining us via Skype this evening to follow deliberate on this, and immediately after the presidential address, is political analyst, Mr. Agbolaba. Thank you, Agbolaba, for staying with us. Thank you for the opportunity. Good evening to you. Now, um, while we await the president's national address, I just want to ask you, um, there was an address he gave uh, prior to the cessation order. Um, what, what are your reactions to some of the things he said during um, the, the passing of the cessation order? Cessation order, as in the lockdown for Lagos, Ogun, and Federal Capital Territory? Yes, please. The three states, Ogun State, Lagos State, and the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Because many people have argued the what fact is that it you want to know yeah, about the other? many people did argue the fact that there were there was not so much of deliberation that there were some certain things that were not considered, and that the decision order was pretty much abrupt. Uh, but Lagos State was already in, in a slow run uh, situation. Yes, but not a not Lagos a total State. lockdown. It wasn't a total lockdown in Lagos State. It was not. Yes. But it was in a slowdown situation. And Ogun State uh, specifically asked for three extra days to allow the citizens of Ogun State to prepare themselves for the lockdown. Uh, the Federal Capital Territory, it was a bit of an abrupt listing for most people there. Okay, Mr. Bolaba, uh, the presidential address, the Mr. Bolaba, just hold your thoughts. Hold your thoughts right there. The presidential speech is ongoing. Let's join in live and we're back to you after the address. We forever remain grateful for your sacrifice during this very difficult time. More measures to motivate our health care workers are being introduced, which we will announce in the coming weeks. As a nation, we are on the right track to win the fight against COVID-19. However, I remain concerned about the increase in number of confirmed cases and deaths being reported across the world and in Nigeria especially. On 30th March 2020, when we started our lockdown in conforming with medical and scientific advice, the total number of confirmed cases across the world was over 780,000. Yesterday, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases globally was over 1 million, 800, and 50,000. This figure is more than double in two weeks. In the last 14 days alone, over 70,000 people have died due to this disease. In the same period, we have seen the health system of even the most developed nations being overwhelmed by this virus. Here in Nigeria, we had 131 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in 12 states on 30th March 2020. This morning, Nigeria had 323 confirmed cases in 20 states. Unfortunately, we now have 10 fatalities. Lagos State remains the center and accounts for 54% of the confirmed cases in Nigeria. When combined with LCT, the two locations represent over 71% of the confirmed cases in Nigeria. Most of our efforts will continue to focus in these two locations. 
majority of the confirmed cases in Lagos and the FCT are individuals with recent international travel history or those that came in contact with returnees from international trips. By closing our airports and land borders and putting strict conditions for seafood activities, we have reduced the impact of external factors on our country. However, the increase in the number of states with positive cases is alarming. The National Center for Disease Control has informed me that a large proportion of new infections are now occurring in our communities through person-to-person -person contacts. So we must pay attention to the danger of close contact between person-to-person. -person. At this point, I will remind all Nigerians to continue to take responsibility for the recommended measures to prevent transmission, including maintaining physical distancing, good personal hygiene, and staying at home. In addition, I have signed the quarantine order in this regard and additional regulations to provide clarity in respect of the control measures for the COVID-19 pandemic, which will be released soon. The public response to COVID-19 is built on our ability to detect, test, and admit cases, as well as trace all their contacts. While I note some appreciable progress, we can achieve a lot more. Today, the cessation of movement, physical distancing measures, and the prohibition of mass gatherings remain the most efficient and effective way of reducing the transmission of the virus. By sustaining these measures, combined with extensive testing and contact tracing, we can take control and limit the spread of the disease. Our approach to the virus remains in two steps. First, to protect the lives of our fellow Nigerians and residents living here, and second, to preserve the livelihoods of workers and business owners. With this in mind, and having carefully considered the briefings and the report from the Presidential Task Force and the various options offered, it has become necessary to extend the current restriction of movement in Lagos and Ogun states as well as the FCT for another 14 days effective from 11.59 p.m. on Monday, 13th of April, 2020. I am therefore once again asking you all to work with government in this fight. This is not a joke. It is a matter of life and death. Mosques in Mecca and Medina have been closed. The Pope celebrated Mass on an empty St. Peter's Square. The famous Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris held Easter Mass with less than 10 people. India, Italy, and France are in complete lockdown. Other countries are in the process of following suit. We cannot be lax. The previously issued guidelines on exempted services shall remain. This is a difficult decision to take, but I am convinced that this is the right decision. The evidence is clear. The repercussions of any premature end to the lockdown action is unimaginable. We must not lose the gains achieved thus far. We must not allow a rapid increase in community transmission. We must endure a little longer. I will therefore take this opportunity to urge you all 
to notify the relevant authorities if you or your loved ones develop any symptoms. I will also ask our healthcare professionals to redouble their efforts to identify all suspected cases, bring them into care, and prevent transmission to others. No country can afford the full impact of a sustained restriction of movement on its economy. I am fully aware of the great difficulties experienced, especially by those who earn a daily wage, such as traders, day workers, artisans, and manual workers. For this group, their sustenance depends on their ability to go out. Their livelihoods depend on them mingling with others and about seeking work. But despite these realities, we must not change the restrictions. In the last two weeks, we announced palliative measures such as food distribution, cash transfers, and loans repayment waivers to ease the pains of our restrictive policies during this difficult time. These palliatives will be sustained. I have also directed that the current social register be expanded from 2.6 million households to 3.6 million households in the next two weeks. This means we will support an additional 1 million homes with our social investment programs. A technical committee is working on this and will submit a report to me by the end of this week. The security agencies have risen to the challenges posed by this unprecedented situation with gallantry, and I commend them. I urge them to continue to maintain utmost vigilance, firmness, as well as restraint in enforcing the restriction orders while not neglecting statutory security responsibilities. Fellow Nigerians, follow the instructions on social distancing. The irresponsibility of the few can lead to the death of many. Your freedom ends where other people's rights begin. The response of our state governors has been particularly impressive, especially in aligning their policies and actions to those of the federal government. In the coming weeks, I want to assure you that the federal government, through the presidential task force, will do whatever it takes to support you in this very difficult period. I have no doubt that by working together and carefully following the rules, we shall get over this pandemic. I must also thank the legislative arm of government for all their support and donations in this very difficult period. This collaboration is critical to the short and long-term success of all the measures that we have instituted in response to the pandemic. As a result of this pandemic, the world as we know it has changed. The way we interact with each other, conduct our businesses and trade, travel, educate our children, and earn our livelihoods will be different. To ensure our economy adapts to this new reality, I am directing the Ministers of Industry, Trade and Investment, Communication and Digital Economy, Science and Technology, Transportation, Aviation, Interior, Health, Works and Housing, Labor and Employment, and Education to jointly develop a comprehensive policy 
for a Nigerian economy functioning with COVID-19. The ministers will be supported by the Presidential Economic Advisory Council and the Economic Sustainability Committee in executing this mandate. I am also directing the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, the National Security Advisor, the Vice Chairman, National Food Security Council, and the Chairman, Presidential Fertilizer Initiative, to work with the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 to ensure the impact of this pandemic on our 2020 farming season is minimized. Finally, I want to thank the members of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 for all their hard work so far. Indeed, the patriotism shown in your work is exemplary and highly commendable. Hello, Nigerians. I have no doubt that by working together and carefully following the rules, we shall get over this pandemic and emerge stronger in the end. I thank you all for listening, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This is Plus Politics, and thank you for staying with us. The president has extended the lockdown by another two weeks. He assured that the policies would be increased across an additional one million household. And joining us live via Skype is Gbolaba, political analyst. Thank you, Mr. Gbolaba, for staying with us. Thank you for the opportunity once again. All right, there we had um, President Mahmoud Buhari's um, national address on the extended lockdown order. Now, prior to, the, uh, to this order, uh, to this address, the first address, the, the opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, did say that the first address didn't address um, the concerns of Nigerians. I need your two cents on this before we now focus on tonight's address by the president. The concerns of Nigerians were respect. Um, that it was pretty, much, it was pretty much abrupt. Defense. Many palliatives were not put in place, given the fact that we have majority of Nigerians who work day in and day out to make their livelihood, that a certain degree of palliatives were not considered, they were not put in place. Oh, let's be very honest with ourselves. The government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, federal or any subnational government does not have the infrastructure to meet out the requisite amount of palliative this society needs. It's a fact. And look, the, 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 president said this, the president said this evening that they are going to increase the number of the eligible households from 2.5 million to 3.5 million. How did they garner the so-called social welfare list? How reliable are the methodologies used? Look, we are in a scenario where everybody is to himself or herself and God is for us all. So I don't want to blow too much grammar on this. The two parties, what's the difference between them? Now, Mr. Goloba, in tonight's address, he did say an additional one million, like you rightly quoted him saying in his address this evening. Now, we're a population of over 180 million, and out of that over 180 million, we have about eight, six million of those people living in extreme poverty. Now, economically, this, this has thrown a blow to economies of the world. And Nigeria being the kind of country it is, we know we have a, a large number of people who their daily sustenance is in their going out daily. By extension, by another two weeks, how do you see this panning out for people who daily source of livelihood is what they can make daily? Far more, far more frustrating, far more exasperating, far more extenuating. That's the reality. But you know what? 
It's a global phenomenon. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. The science of it is speaking to the science of it is speaking to a lockdown. The reality of it is different from one polity to the other, but in our polity, we have never had a very coherent society before anyway. So I don't want to talk partisan politics now. None of the two parties could have done any better in this circumstance because in all the years of administering us, be it from before 1999 or from 1999, they have squandered the opportunity or the many opportunities of building a coherent society. So we are, we are where we are now, and the reality is such that the reality is such that I don't just want to imagine the level, the level of frustration, the level of circumstantial, circumstantial pains that many in this country will go through. Now, where a particular nation, Nigeria, as it stands, and already um, prior to this address, many people have been anticipating this address, that people have already taken to the streets, and there were protests in some areas. And if you're aware, there were, there were shootings in Kaduna, where about five people, or over five people were reported to have lost their lives. And people were already saying they would defy the order should it be extended. Are we likely to see anarchy, given this extension from now to the 27th of April? We are likely, let, 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 me be very, let me be very sober in my use of language and very circumspect. We are likely going to see protestations. I don't want to use the word anarchy, but we are likely going to see protestations because importantly, many, a higher percentage a higher percentage of our population are disconnected from what the government is saying. They don't see their reality to be consistent with the abstinence and the deniability that they are being subjected to. So naturally, naturally, that will precipitate, ultimately precipitate protestations. Now, in his address, he, he did make mention that he was going to um, um, expedite the signing of the quarantine order. And also, he also did urge ministries to develop a comprehensive policy to actually save the economy. In, in your own opinion, as a political analyst, what do you think the government, the federal government, should have done differently, given the two weeks that we just, that, that, um, that ends today and before the extension we get until the 27th. What were you expecting to see in place before now? It is obvious, as at this juncture, that the administration of the palliative measures were at best haphazard in the last two weeks. There was nothing systemic about it. I don't want to believe that it met the objective for which it was set. And it is also a fact that the president has acknowledged, either directly or indirectly, that it was too little and somewhat too late. Now, he has increased it, and increased it by one million, one million households more, and still of the opinion that it is still little. Now, the fact, though, is that we were caught by an unexpected blow. And this is a technical knock knockout for a boxer called Nigeria that was ill prepared in the first instance because all the cleavages, all the fault lines, and indeed all the misgovern all the parameters of misgovernance of Nigeria will now come to utter all. And this is not a partisan, this is not a partisan issue. Because there's no single party in Nigeria now that has ever assumed the rulership of any subnationality or indeed the federation that can tell me 
that they had done anything in the past to measure up to the needs of the extant circumstance. Now, Mr. Bola, we have about we have over 86 million Nigerians who are living currently in extreme poverty. And, and Lagos State, the epicenter of this, of this pandemic, happens to be, um, has the great, greatest number of, of those people. Now, people have argued that be proud to the cessation order, the first cessation order by the president, that the executive governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sanlu, was on top of the matter, bear in mind that initially he had wanted to impose an, an 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew while they were trying to sort out the best way to go about this. Now, do you think the effort of the Lagos State government was, was truncated in the fight against this pandemic by the cessation order by the federal government? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I'm one who believes that the Lagos State government could have been or should have been left to keep on the trajectory of its methodology of administering the social distance, the social distancing etiquette, and the public health uh, mechanism that it was putting in place. I'm one who still believes that the total lockdown pronounced again is an overkill. We need to adhere to social distancing etiquette. We need to mandate anybody going into the public space if you are leaving if you are leaving your door mouth as we usually say in nigeria if you are going to be leaving your door mouth you ought to be adorning uh, a clothing mask like a anchor sheet or something like that you don't necessarily have to have an n95 mask and one who believes that people like it was when Lagos State was still managing it, people should be allowed to go out not so aggressively as though things are normal globally, but that the total lockdown is an overkill. But having said that, reality as at this juncture is that the total lockdown has been extended, except you fall into the category of those who have essential services uh, ex exiat or exemption services uh, um, waiver is a lockdown.